In the NBA, bad calls happen all the time. This is of course due to human error as referees are not perfect, but unfortunately, sometimes these bad calls can cost teams games. As you are watching on your screen right now, here are times where bad calls have cost teams regular season games, but in today's video, we are going to go deeper. We are going to look at seven times where a referee's bad call cost a team either a playoff game or going even further, an NBA championship. So what's up guys, Mike here, and yes, today we are going to look at seven times bad calls potentially changed the course of NBA history. That is not an exaggeration. All of these calls took place during the playoffs or during the NBA finals, which of course means if the correct call had been made, we're talking about potentially different teams making the finals, and we're talking about potentially different teams winning the finals. So with that said, I think you guys are really going to enjoy this video, and I also want to say if you do like this video, make sure to leave a a like. You guys have been crushing it with likes lately and it really helps out a ton. Thank you so much and for now, let's jump into the video. We are now at the beginning of the James Harden and Dwight Howard era in Houston where the Rockets had plenty of hype. In fact, Houston actually had the fourth best championship odds out of any team before the 2014 NBA season began and in the 2014 playoffs, they were matched up against the Portland Trailblazers. Now, this game had multiple clutch shots including this play by LaMarcus Aldridge. And it's Matthews for the lead. No. Put back. No again. Tapped home. Yes, this tip-in would send the game into overtime, and in general here, LaMarcus Aldridge actually had a legendary performance for the Blazers. He would finish this game with 46 points and 18 rebounds, but this was still a close game, and Portland led by just one with 14 seconds left. It was at this point that James Harden attempted a three-pointer. The thing is, what's important here is this. The three right away, strong, powered. And Freeland with a loose ball foul. As we can see, as Dwight Howard and Joel Freeland battle for the rebound, Howard is called for an offensive foul. But if we look closer, on this play, Freeland had both of his arms wrapped around Dwight. Yet for some reason, the call goes against Dwight. The NBA would even admit after this game that this was indeed an incorrect call. And this game swung the momentum here and potentially the series for Portland, as the Blazers would go on to win this game and eventually close out the series in six games. The thing is, if this call had been made for Houston, the Rockets would have had a better shot at winning game one, and that would have given them a huge advantage moving forward in the series. Instead, Damian Lillard did this. A three wins the series. It's Lillard. He got the shot off. Oh my God! A play that is one of the most memorable playoff buzzer beaters of all time, and also a play that left Dwight Howard completely stunned. Moving on though, we are now going to review is a play so crucial that it potentially swung the winner of the Eastern Conference in 1999. Because in 1999, the New York Knicks were an eight seed who surprisingly advanced to the conference finals. It was there that they were matched up against the Indiana Pacers, who finished 33 and 17 in a shortened lockout season. And after the eighth seeded Knicks stole home court advantage in a 93 to 90 win in game one. Game two would also give us a very close game. The Pacers would win game two, 88 to 86. Now, more bad news would come for New York when after this game, it was revealed that Patrick Ewing had a ruptured Achilles and would miss the rest of the playoffs. This should have spelled doom for the Knicks, but in game three, they hung in there. And in the fourth quarter, after Mark Jackson made two free throws for the Pacers, New York would call a timeout down 91 to 88 with the ball in 11.9 seconds. Seconds left. Ward with a pass tip but handled by Johnson. Johnson is three point territory but guarded tightly. Johnson cuts left. Now fires a three, and it's good, and he's fouled! As we just saw, the Knicks' first option when inbounding the ball would be Allen Houston. However, he was well covered, and Larry Johnson received the inbounds pass instead. Johnson would make an improbable game-tying shot with 5.7 seconds remaining and was fouled. And from there, Johnson would also make his free throw to put the Knicks ahead by a point, and after Mark Jackson missed a potential game-winning shot for the Pacers, it was the Knicks who took home game three. Taking a closer look at this play, though, you can see it's pretty clear that there is a minimal contact from Antonio Davis as he was defending Larry Johnson. In fact, there is a legitimate debate whether Davis even touched Johnson at all as he attempted to tie this game. Now, to be clear, this was still a very impressive shot by Larry Johnson, and Knicks fans, I know you've had a hard time, so I don't really want to pile it on. However, this call probably should not have been made, and if this no call was made, then this game would go into overtime where Indiana would have been able to regroup and possibly take game three. 
three, which meant if the Pacers had won this game, they very well could have taken down a Knicks team without Patrick Ewing, giving Reggie Miller a chance to win his only NBA championship. However, because of this call, Indiana did lose and Reggie Miller would retire with zero rings. On April 27th, 2002, the Charlotte Hornets and Orlando Magic were in a highly contested first round playoff game. As game three showcased two young budding superstars in Tracy McGrady and Baron Davis. In fact, T-Mac was actually first team All-NBA this season over Allen Iverson. A very impressive feat as AI had just won the MVP the year before and McGrady would finish this game with 37 points. So it was to no one's surprise that with one minute, 13 seconds left, Под кольцом. Yes, Tracy would connect on a game-tying three and the magic crowd went crazy. Fast forwarding here though, we now have just 0.7 seconds remaining on the clock when... P.J. Brown and Baron Davis успевает выбросить мячик. Yes, as you can see, Baron Davis made a potential insane game-winning shot, but this play was waved off. As we watch the replay, however, we can see this shot should have counted, but at the time, the NBA did not review game-winning buzzer beaters. To anyone who didn't watch the NBA at this time, that does sound insane, but it's the truth. Sometimes shots that should have counted just simply wouldn't because the refs made a mistake. This was also the case just a few days later, as sticking in the first round of the playoffs, the Pacers and Nets were in a game five matchup, and because the first round only lasted five games at this point, this was a win or go home situation. And with 5.1 seconds remaining, Richard Jefferson was at the line with a chance to kiss the game away. Yes, Jason Kidd actually did this before all of his free throws. However, Richard Jefferson was still a rookie, and so Jefferson, two big free throws for the rookie. And not even close. The crucial one to make it a four-point game with 5.1 remaining. They have court. They must foul. They cannot risk it. This is both. And from there, these two missed free throws would lead to this. O'Neal the rebound. Kevin Alley brings it up. Throws it across. Miller for three. Oh, he backed it in. As we can see, Reggie Miller connected on an improbable shot here to send the game into overtime. However, if you take a closer look here, you can see that the ball was still in Reggie's hands when the buzzer sounded, which means this shot should not have counted. And the importance of this call at the time cannot be understated, because even though the Nets would go on to win in double overtime, the fact that Reggie Miller's shot did count meant that the Pacers had a chance to win in overtime. And this was against a New Jersey Nets team that would not only win this series, but would reach the NBA Finals this year. So because this shot counted, the Pacers were given an opportunity they shouldn't have received, and if they were able to close out this game in overtime, would have given us one of the rare times that an eight seed took down a one seed in the first round of the NBA playoffs. On July 30th, 2002, the NBA officially introduced reviewing calls with instant replay. Next up though, the Phoenix Suns were serious finals contenders during the 2007 NBA playoffs after after having won 61 games during the regular season. And on May 14th, 2007, Phoenix would face the San Antonio Spurs in a Game 4 Western Conference semifinals matchup. It was in this tense game that, when the Suns were leading by 3 points with 18.2 seconds to go, Robert Ory notoriously hip-checked Steve Nash. And yes, this play was rightfully called a flagrant foul, and Robert Ory was ejected. However, as you can see to the right of your screen, Amari Stoudemire and Boris Diaw both left the bench and went towards this chaos. Due to NBA rules at the time, this resulted in an automatic ejection for both players, and what was even worse, it resulted in a suspension for Game 5. This was, of course, very important as Amari and Diaw were both key players for the Phoenix Suns, and the San Antonio Spurs would take advantage of the Suns' lack of depth in Game 5, but still, the Spurs only won by 3 points. Phoenix would go on to lose this series, but a lot of players that were on that Suns team still believe that if both Amari and Boris Dia played in Game 5 that year, the Suns would have won that series and eventually would have won the NBA championship. And because the Spurs would go on to beat the Utah Jazz and then sweep the Cavs in the NBA Finals, you can certainly see why the Phoenix Suns players believe this. I think we can all agree that a playoff suspension just for leaving the bench was a little extreme.
screen and I just wish we could have seen what the Phoenix Suns would have done if they were at full strength. Here we have one of the most important back calls the NBA has ever seen or is it? You can make the call here as with the Pistons up three to two in the 1988 NBA Finals, time was winding down in a crucial game six. And in this moment, Detroit was winning this game 102 to 101 and if they got a stop, they likely would be NBA champions. However, Kareem, the old man goes up and misses the shot but goes to the line with 14 seconds to go and a chance to give the Lakers the lead. Yes, the referee here called Bill Lambeer for a foul on Kareem Abdul-Jabbar's signature skyhook and the controversy here comes with the amount of contact. Because yes, while there is certainly some contact, was there enough to warrant a foul in the closing minutes of a championship game? A time where, as we have seen, usually it takes someone getting heavily, heavily fouled to draw a call. So in this instance, I'd say the call could have gone either way, but Kareem was given a foul and he would knock down both free throws. The Lakers would then also go on to win this game and the Lakers would also win game seven, making them NBA champions. However, if the ref had not made this foul call, we are likely talking about a Pistons three-peat as Detroit would go on to win the next two NBA championships. And with that said, unfortunately, this is not the only time a bad call potentially changed a finals outcome. Because even after reviewing instant replays was implemented, we are now in the 2018 finals, where the most memorable play from game one was of course J.R. Smith running out the clock instead of taking a shot. What a lot of people forget, however, is just a few plays earlier. And I'm gonna make Nick Young shoot the ball if I can. Duran on the drive, slices inside, offensive foul. As we can see, Golden State was down 104 to 102 when LeBron was called for a blocking foul, which sent Kevin Durant to the line to tie the game. But when we look closer at this play, the lines become blurred. As former NBA referee Steve Javi, who is now a rules analyst for ESPN, would admit after this game, quote, this is the kind of play that's 50-50. Some guys will say it's a charge, some guys will say it's a block. In real time, it's definitely a charge. And if this play had been called to charge, the Cavs would have received the ball up 104-102 with a chance to make game one a two possession game. Instead, Kevin Durant would make both his free throws and the antics of J.R. Smith will infamously live on forever. And sure, the Cavs were still heavy underdogs to win the finals this year, but you never know what LeBron James could have done here. There we have it guys. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed today's video. Again, if you did like the video, make sure to leave a like. It helps out a ton. And if you're not subscribed, already make sure to subscribe so you don't miss a video if you're already subscribed thank you so much for supporting you're awesome we all know it and as always have an awesome day and cue that music